Hey guys, we're here today for another episode of the Butt Dyna Report. This week, we're gonna be doing a front and rear subframe locking collar kit from ECS Tuning. This will just increase turn in and keep that subframe locked in so we can just have more fun in the twisties. So let's tell you where we're at right now and why we need this locking collar kit. So when I installed the rear sway bar and I was testing it, I started to hear some noise. And I couldn't, I couldn't pinpoint where this noise was coming from. It was like a clunk, a thud, like you were running over a small thing in the road. And I couldn't pinpoint when it was happening, why it was happening or anything. Um, and then I kind of started to hear it was, it was kind of back there, I thought. So I thought maybe the sway bar end link was at its full extension, it was hitting against itself. I don't really know. Uh, I went and looked, they were all tightened down properly, adjusted well weren't at the end of themselves, if you will. And I was like, where is it? And then I checked the exhaust hangers because I had to remove that. Maybe that was kind of clunking around because the clunking started to happen more and more and more and more. And for the life of me, I could not figure out what it was. And I should have done this sooner, but finally I went to the forums. So when I first started searching on the forums, the thing I searched was exhaust clunk. Now, I was actually very fortunate because I got one of the words right of what the problem was. And I started searching, people were saying like, the exhaust is making noises, and then I kind of got this other thing called subframe clunk. And I was like, what the heck's that? And they were talking about it, and I was like, wait, I think, I think that might be what my problem is, why my car is making this weird noise that it didn't used to before. So I, I did some research, and ECS makes a kit to fix this. But the reason why subframe clunk happens is two reasons. One, age and the stretching of the bolts that hold the subframe in place. And two, when you stiffen the chassis. So my car is about eight years old now and I just stiffen the chassis. So that is both of them happening at the same time. Now that would just, I mean, exacerbate the situation of the age of the bolts when I put the rear sway bar in. So that's why the clunking started to happen then. And what it is, is for me, it's mostly on deceleration. You can hear the subframe go clunk, clunk, clunk. People say it sounds like an old wooden ship. I'm like, that's kind of cool actually. That's a good way of putting it. Being from New England, there's a ton of old wooden ships up there. So I kind of know what it's like, but it makes, it makes, makes light of a, uh, but not the best situation. But the reason it clunks as well is because Volkswagen, in their infinite wisdom of engineering, decided to add a little bit of movement, or at least the availability of movement in the subframe around the bolts. Uh, don't know why. I, someone might have explained it on the forums, but couldn't have cared less. Didn't really think of it at all. And over time, the bolts stretch and they're not as tight. So then the subframe moves under acceleration and deceleration. Um, and it just causes that clunking noise because the subframe is moving around, hitting against the bolts. Um, one of the things you can do to fix it is you can actually tighten the bolts back down to spec. And just retighten them, makes it go away. But I wanted a bit more of a permanent fix. One of the permanent fixes, permanent, from uh, the dealership that you can get are shims. They'll replace the bolts and put little shims there, I guess, to get it tighter underneath uh, where the bolt goes on the subframe. But people say that A, not worth it. B, it isn't really a permanent fix. So the next option was one that I found from ECS, which is what we're gonna be installing, is the subframe locking collar kit. Now these are collars that go on between the subframe and the car, and then the bolt and the subframe. So there's two collars per bolt that just fill that void that Volkswagen allowed for movement. So the car, it, the subframe isn't gonna be clunking around when you move, it's locking everything down in place um, with the added benefit of increased handling. Mostly on turn in, people say when you put the front ones in that everything's just a lot more responsive. Turn in is very sharp and crisp. That's why we're here on the Butt Dyna Report is because this is another form of stiffening the chassis. It's locking everything down, keeping that subframe from moving around. And we're gonna be putting both the front and rears in at the same time, because honestly, there's no point in just putting one in and then seeing what happens. So we're gonna be putting all of them in and it's gonna be fun. But I'm, I'm interested to see, because I was reading some of the reviews and people were talking about 
how the turn in when you put the fronts in is just that much better. It's crisp, but I'm assuming it's better because of how the weight is distributed in the immediacy of turning. So without the locking collar kit, you've probably got just a fraction of amount of time where the weight is being shifted over before it locks in and you turn. But with the locking collar kit, that transfer of weight is minimized and you can just turn in and the whole car just doesn't move as much so you're getting a more immediate response to turn in. And I am so looking forward to that. I'm also very much looking forward to the car not sounding like an old creaky ship. I almost said rusted ship, but wood does not rust. Nope, gotta get the terminology right here. I'm, I'm really in, not anticipating too much in terms of like, oh man, I can turn so much faster in corners, but I'm betting that weight transfer is just gonna be minimized. So turning is gonna be so crisp and sharp and there probably will be some better feedback from the road to the wheels because it's more of a direct, not sloppy transfer of all that weight to the ground. We're also putting an exhaust in soon. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that. Clunks every once in a while. I haven't heard it in some other videos that I've filmed with this clunk, but you never know, you might be able to hear it but I'm ready to get this clunk gone. So we are gonna get in the garage, get these new bolts, get these locking collars installed. Then we're gonna take it back out and see how it does and see if that clunk is gone. So the install wasn't too bad for the front or the rear. The front was a little more interesting because it required a little more lowering precariously of the subframe, but it's all back in, including the rear. So we're gonna see how the car handles now and if we've gotten rid of the subframe clunk. Once I got everything tightened back down on the subframe, I noticed that the subframe still clunks a little bit. Now it's, nowhere near as much as it was clunking before, but it still is. So I know I know the collars are doing their job to the best of their ability, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering what else might I need to do. Now I have checked everything, everything's tightened down, torqued to spec, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go back over them again just to be sure to see everything is tightened down properly. But one thing I can tell you is this car feels so confident. That's really what I'm kind of thinking. We're coming up to a turn right now and just turning is so sharp and you just get instant. Oh my goodness. You really get instant turn in and the feedback is just genuinely incredible. Like the, the, the little slop that you had in that subframe, now that it's gone, you can feel the road just a little bit more. That turn in is just so crisp because there's not that millisecond of movement in that subframe that you lose a little bit of that reaction time so that you just you turn in and it just goes it is awesome now these were a pretty cheap mod and honestly as kind of intimidated as i was with the front subframe having to like not really lower it all the way it was very very easy to do and it wasn't very expensive either it was actually a pretty pretty good deal if you ask me very, very happy with it. Making sure I'm not hitting a car as I'm turning, so that's why I'm hesitating for a second. But it's awesome. These are these are great. They are something you can do if you need maintenance done on your subframe, so might as well go for them. You can get new bolts, you can get these little shims they put in to stop that movement and stop that clunking, but don't go that route go for the locking collar kit, whatever you want from ECS, from 034, any of those places, these kits are great. I have the ones from ECS and they're fantastic. I love the fact that they come with all new bolts because you kind of need to do that anyway. They're stretch bolts. I actually was like curious, like, oh, they're stretch bolts? How much do they stretch? And you can actually compare them side by side, the new and the old, and there's about that much of a difference. They, they, do, they do stretch. So you do need new ones, but, these are, these are awesome. This car is being 
brought together just in so many awesome ways with handling, with a little bit of power. I'm really excited to get an ECU tune. That is something I'm very, very excited for. But how this car handles now, I just have so much more confidence on turn-in. It really does just stay planted and that feedback, that little bit extra feedback from the road in the seat and in the steering wheel is awesome. Now I will say, this added a little bit more NVH than I was expecting. I was expecting honestly nothing to be added. I thought it was just gonna be pretty chill and not, but no, I've got, I've actually got a decent bit of added vibrations all over the place. It might be a compound effect with all the other things that I've done, but I'm not complaining. I love it so much. This really is something that you should do. Even if you don't have subframe clunk, it's something you should do. Now, let's see, I'm coming, I'm slowing down, see if you can hear any clunking. No, none right now. Sorry for the blinker. No. I have noticed that as this has kind of been driven around a little bit, the clunking has gotten less and less frequent. So that is, that is something that is good. Although I can say with confidence that this subframe is locked down. I'm feeling more in tune with the car. That's one thing I do like about the, the stiffening of it, the inserts that are just tightening it all down so you feel a lot more of the road. It's over the little bumps, it genuinely is a little bit more harsh from the NVH noise, vibration, and harshness. So it's a, it's a little bit more harsh, but generally speaking, car guys understand that that's what you want to do. Now, if you don't want to add any NVH, then don't you don't need to do this. But I am 100% okay with adding all of those things because it means I feel more in tune with the car. I can feel, I can feel the car. It's, it's really is slowly becoming more and more of an extension of my feet and my hands, stuff that I can feel, how it's doing, where the tires are at. It's, it's awesome. It really is. And like I said before, turn in is so crisp and so sharp. It truly is unbelievable. Before I did, the spacer kit and the rear sway bar turn in was incredibly sharp. It was just set up how it's supposed to be from the factory, which was just very good handling, crisp, all those, all those things. So then when I started, when I started to mess with Volkswagen's handling setup, some stuff was lost, some stuff was gained, but with this locking collar kit on both the front and rear subframe, it, it's come, it's coming back to life. It. It's awesome. The turn-in truly is absolutely beautiful. So to show you a little bit more of what the turn-in is like, we're doing 55. That is freaking insane how just it just kind of goes and bites. It's insane. Absolutely love this with my whole heart. This, oh. This car is handling like a stinking dream right now. I am beyond excited for coilovers, beyond excited to continue to further go deeper and deeper and deeper into suspension mods. That is, the handling of this is fan flipping -tastic. I'm just gonna say it again, it is fan flipping -tastic. Absolutely love it. All right, one last example of this turn in and then we'll call it a day. You put that thing late in there and turn in and it still grabs. That is awesome, absolutely awesome. Well, if you guys were questioning whether or not you wanted a lock and collar kit for your Mark 6 GTI subframe, don't think, just buy. It is awesome. And it's it's also helps with the clunk. I mean, I'm I still got some, but a lot of people said it got rid of theirs completely. So take their word for it too. 
I bet it works. I might just have to do something else. I'm not sure. But this is fantastic for the money. I wouldn't think that little pieces of aluminum for $150 total, I got them on sale, would have such an impact. It is truly spectacular and I absolutely love it. I also love handling mods, so that might just be me overreacting a little bit, but it's okay. But anyways, you guys are the best. We are nearing a thousand subscribers and you are so awesome for supporting this channel. So I just wanted to say thank you again. So thank you for watching. Please have a great day. Please subscribe and remember, Jesus loves you. Bye.